Hello guys, welcome to another video. Like always, this story doesn't belong to me and the link to the original post will be in the description. That being said, let's get into the video. Son of the Sanin, Chapter 2 and Part 2 Midnight Drinks Uchiha or Uchihas are weird, weird, weird. Six months after the QV attack, Joraya and Tsunade were both exceptional ninjas. The kind that only appeared once every few generations. They both graduated the academy at an age most kids are still most kids still cannot tie their shoelaces. Made Junin before hitting puberty and managed to become Jonin before being sixteen. From that point onward the two Sanin and their uh, and their fall, fallen team made Orochimaru to a merit of dangerous missions. If there was a task with a high chance of dying, they would do it without receiving a single scratch. If there was a mission that appeared to be impossible, they would make it look as, look as if it would be done by a mere genin. They never stopped to battle themselves and improve in their areas of skill. They never stopped to battle themselves and improve their improved in their areas of skills. Juraya became a field master of Mina of Minaun and one of the few Senjutsu pra uh, practitioners alive. Sunade became one of the best medical ninja the world ever knew, and both of them became incredibly powerful ninja, overshadowed by a few and admired by many. Still, despite all the skills they had learned and honed over the over their lifespan, nothing could prepare them for the horror that it was to take care of a baby. Naruto used to cry a lot, often for no reason, and at completely random times. Though he was rather fond of doing it at midnight, he had to be watched constantly, or else he would somehow disappear only to hysterically appear outside the house, he would try to grab anything within his short reach and more often than not would try to eat it. He, one of the few things that would calm Naruto whenever he had a crying fit was Tsunade holding him against her chest. Joraya had joked that Tsunade's knockers would of course have a smoothing, soothing effect on any man, no matter their age. Yet it turned out to be more than a joke when the, when the slug princess breastfeeded Naruto and the little Jinjuriki would, uh, little Jinjuriki just wouldn't let go of her breast. The fact that na uh, the fact that the boy, that the baby was positively elated uh, whenever Tsunade started to undo her bosoms wasn't a good sign at all. This is bad. You are not even a year old, yet Joraya is already rubbing off on you. Tsunade said after the first time it happened. Or then again, it would be something else since Naruto's stomach was a bottomless pit. He would eat a lot and would never be satisfied. He always wanted more and whenever his food was denied, he would go into a crying fit. Everybody wondered why the hell his little body stored all that food. The, on, on the bright side, Naruto was at least easy to feed, if a little, bit, a little bit costly. Today was one of Tsunade's two days off after a rather long shift at the hospital. She would have, uh, she would have spent the days sleeping, but neither Juraya nor Shizune were there, so she had to watch over Naruto who just had calmed down from one of his random crying fits. She sighed in relief when she heard the main door opening. Tsunade-sama, I am back, said Shizune's voice as she entered the house. Shizune was wearing a flag jacket, a flag, a green flag vest, common among the Konoha, Chunin and Jonin over her usual clothes. A forehead protector was worn around her head. Unlike Tsunade and Joraya, Shizune showed interest in joining the Konoha Ninja, Shikaku Nara, Konoha's current Jonin commander alongside other Jonin 
tested her abilities to determine her rank and they decided she was good enough to be a tune-in, thus she was a good medic. Something Konoha was in desperate need of. Everybody hoped that Tsunade's presence in the village would solve the issue. Good, because I need you to go buy some baby food. I was about to go myself, but you know how Naruto gets when we go out and he's hungry. The blonde woman replied, what? What and what happened to all the baby food I had that I bought before I left for my mission? Shizune asked incredulously. Tsunade stared at her in a way that said, Do you really need to ask? Without further ado, the young woman nodded and went to buy the much needed food. Tsunade wondered what, Jor what was Joraya doing, given that the toad says really left, really left the house. Tsunade had forbidden him from doing any research anymore, meaning that he could only use his imagination to write his erotic novels. He was hoping that he would take care of the baby while she had a much needed nap. But unfortunately for the legendary Sakar and An who appeared claiming that the Hokage requested Joraya's presence, of course, such a convenient timing, convenient timing. It seemed that fate was cons conspiring against her. Meanwhile, in the Hyuga compound, a toddler sneezed. sneezed. Hyuga compound. You know, Sensei, I wasn't expecting you would call me into action so soon. Are you sure that this mission is something? No other ninja but me can do, the Toad Sage asks you a bit skip a spectacle. Once, uh, once the old Hokage activated all the privacy seals, he answered, yes, yes, indeed. You are the best information gatherer this village has, see, uh, has seen. If somebody can unfold this mystery, it's you. Let me guess, you think that the QBS KB Kushina wasn't an accident? Duraya uh, vented a uh, Venturedly to us because we all know that it was something that could have that something that could happen, yes, and we set the proper measures, but no, that's not why we that's not why we came to the consoles that got that but no, that's not why we came to the con uh, console that there was somebody Conclusion that uh, there was somebody behind the attack. It enlightened me then. After the QB had a con uh, had been cont uh, contained, we, rece we received we recovered the body of my wife Yoako, who was the midwife during the delivery, as well as few few Anwu that we had stationed to make sure nothing happened. The atmosphere reveals wounds. The uh, autosky uh, reveal wounds inflicted by ninja weapon. Shouldn't you have told me this much earlier? Joraya asked. Maybe, but I didn't want to call you into action so soon. You see, there has been another investigation going on during these past months, carried out by Danzo and his branch of Anbu. Juraya frowned upon hearing that name. Danzo was known for being an ex uh, extra extremist, often, uh, often, inter often in recruited orphan to bolster his or bolster his or organization's rank. Was an uh, was an critical uh, was an critic of Sarutobi's Con uh, conciliatory effects, effects with other villages and never bothered to hide that he wanted to be Hokage more than anything. Fortunately, he never had enough support to achieve his achieve such ambition. I see. Did they find something? If uh, if Joraya was asking this, he knew there was two possible answers. They either found nothing or they found something that Sarutobi didn't like and wanted a second opinion. The super pervert paid, uh, prayed for the former, but most likely with Tsunade, fate, but just like with Tsunade, fate 
felt like conspiring against the Sane. Yes, Sarutobi said sighing. Danzo and I had been discussing the events of that night. According to many witnesses, he interrogated, interrogated it. It's not like the QB simply broke through our walls. It suddenly appeared in the middle of the village, coming out of the cloud of a cloud of smoke. That of that sounds awfully similar to summoning Jutsu. Juraya pointed out. Indeed, it is. But then again, summoning the QV, the only person I can think of being able to pull something like this is Madara Uchiha and he has been dead for decades. Maybe he had an apprentice, someone he trained on how to tame the tailed beast. It sounds rather far-fetched. We all know that Madara left the village alone and tried to attack it alone. He never married nor had any children that would revenge his death. Anyways, Danzo decided that Madara was a good starting point. He made some interesting discoveries behind. Besides Hashirama senses, Madara, uh, Hashirama sensei Madara also had a way to control the tailed beast. He believed it was his Sharen gun. You see, Madara's Sharen gun wasn't normal. normal. Apparently, he managed to awaken a higher level of Sharen gun that gathered him, that granted him extraordinary, extraordinary new power. So, Madara was an unbelievably powerful ninja who had apparent, uh, who had plenty of unique abilities, just like Hashirama. That doesn't mean said ability can be replicated by his clansmen, just like how Hashirama's descendants didn't inherit the wood release. The thing is they can be replicated. You see this Sharingan named Mongikyo Sharingan is an ability every Uchiha can attain. But very few do because of its high price. If what Danzo uncovered is accurate, the prequel, the condition to awaken this Mongikyo Sharingan is to murder with your own hands someone you are close to or you love. The Uchiha might be to be to a battle aggro but not even them would uh, them would go so far just to just for the sake of power but danzo believes that one of them did yes even if that's not uh, that's true what does uh, even if that's true what was the point of throwing the qv into the village what did this person would have gained Wait, please tell me Danzo doesn't believe the whole clan was behind the attack. Sadly, he does. To a stupid one-eyed uh, Gilot, 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 Juraya muttered. This, uh, this made the Toad Sage, Toad, Toad Sage feel grateful for not having Danzo as the Hokage or else the situation would have been much worse. That's stupid on every level. I know, that's why he ordered the Uchiha to stay in the rear and help the civilian evacuate. He didn't want any Uchiha to get near the QV. Of course, a, a thief believes everybody steals. Joraya said he had no doubt that, that, uh, that, uh, that what Danzo would do if he had the power or to tame the day beast. You have to stop Danzo. The Uchiha are, are already cranky as they are without him poking them with a stick. That's why I called you Joraya. The only way I can stop Danzo is with enough uh, tang uh, tangible, uh, tangible evidence to discredit his own investigation. And I cannot think in any in anybody think of anybody better than you to gather said evidence. While I am flattered that you think so highly of my skills, I am not omniscient. This will take quite some time. I know while you are working, I know while you are working, I will make sure to keep Danzo on a tight leash. Alright then, Juraya said as he headed for the door. Oh, and one more thing, hmm? the, do you realize that if I work on this, I will it will cut into my writing time, meaning that I will take much longer to finish the next Icha Icha book, right? Sarutobi gasped in shock. 
his eyes open in a wide, a wide open wide in horror but said horror was short but said horror was short lived and his face soon relaxed they said a, a sad smile from, uh, formed in on his face sometimes we have to make sacrifices for the greater good joraya regardless of how much pain there may be Hiruzen was in a Shizune was in a market close to her house uh, carrying out Tsunade's request. After finding Naruto's favorite brand of baby food, she decided to buy all of it in one go to save for the trips. Though she couldn't help but wonder how long it would last, he needed to teach that kid the meaning of the word moderation. Uh, excuse me, miss, a voice behind Shizune said. The black-haired uh, Konoichi turned around and saw a boy looking at her. The boy would be about five or six years old. He had dull, uh, he had dull black hair, dull, dull black hair long enough to be styled in a ponytail, deep black eyes, and wore a shirt, black pants, and blue sandals. He appeared to be an Uchiha. Yes, can I help you? Shizune said, putting up her best smile. Do you really need all that baby food? I would like some too, if it's not asking much. There is more baby food left here. Yes, but that's the only brand my brother will eat without throwing a tantrum. The black-haired boy said, Oh, I can totally re relate to that. Shizune said, giggling. Guess that uh, I wasn't too. Uh, guess that I wasn't too nice of me if to take all of it like that. How many would you like? Uh, would you want? How many would you want? Two would be enough. Shizune complied and gave two jars of baby food to the boy. There you go. Thank you, Miss. My name is Shizune. By the way, Itachi. Itachi Uchiha. The boy said, confirming. Shizune's guest. Nice to meet you, Itachi. Your brother is lucky to have a nice and caring big brother like you uh, taking care of him. Itachi blushed a little. Thank you. Uh, both of them headed to the cashier. Itachi decided to keep talking. You know, that baby of your must be really big if he eats that much, Itachi commented, looking at Shizune's basket loaded with jars of baby food. That's the funny thing, he's so little. Tsunade-sama said that one day she is going to find where all the food he eats goes because he is always hungry and never gets fat. Tsunade-sama? Itachi, Itachi asked. Then he, a realization suddenly dawned on him. Wait a minute, that baby of yours is the kid with the demon fox still inside him? Shizune's bright mood suddenly darkened and pondered if she if she should answer him. But then again, the most of the villagers already knew her as one of Naruto's caretakers, so lying would be pointless. Yes, he is. And how is he? Itachi asked with genuine curiosity. What do you mean? Does he have something that makes him different from other babies? Nothing that I have noticed. Trust me, deep down he is like everybody else. My parents didn't say anything, but I heard many grown-ups saying that he is dangerous and that we should stay away from him. That's nonsense. Naruto is a normal kid like any other. Just because he has a demon seal inside of him doesn't make him Dangerous. The seal, uh, the seal, the fourth placed on him will make sure the QB wouldn't see daylight in a long, long time. Then why did they bring Juraya Sama and Tsunade Sama? Then, then why did they bring Juraya Sama and Tsunade Sama taking care of him? Chizune didn't like the course the conversation was taking. What do you mean by bring? They say that the Hokage had to recall the two legendary signings to keep the demon fox under watch and to make sure he doesn't try to destroy Konoha again. 
Shizune was livid. Where did that rumor come from? Wasn't people aware of Joraya being the kid's godson and Tsunade Sama being his only blood relative? Uh, it was obvious that neither Tsunade Sama nor Joraya Sama had heard of this rumor, or else they would have done something. She remembered the first time she decided to take a walk while carrying Naruto on a stroller. People shot at, uh, shouted at her to get away from them. That she was putting them in danger by taking that thing out of his cage. At first, she tried to ignore them and go somewhere else. But whenever, whenever he, where, wherever he, she went, the treatment she got was the same. How could they be afraid of such an innocent creature? The next time she went on a walk with Naruto, Tsunade went with them as well, and they got the same treatment the moment they placed a foot on another street. That was a fail, fatal mistake. Only Shizune's pleases stopped Tsunade from leveling the entire district. Still, quite a, quite a few people had to be hospitalized. From that day onward, the verbal abuse stopped, but things didn't change that much. Whenever Shizune would walk with Naruto, people would simply return to their homes or leave the street until she and her ward were far enough. Some people muttered under their breaths words that the medic in training couldn't hear but could guess. They also shouted her cold stra uh, shot her cold stares. She feared that Naruto would have a hard time making friends. Then again, this was a new, a new scenery for her. While she had knew that knew what most adults thought about Naruto, she was now talking with a child with no visible parents present. It was a golden opportunity to not only to learn what any children would think of Naruto but to erase whatever prejudgment were implanted in his young mind. Let me tell you that's a lie. Sunade sama and Uriya sama are taking care of Naruto because both of them had strong ties with, uh, with their parents. If that doesn't, if that, that wasn't the case, then Naruto would be on an orphanage or under the care of any foster family. He doesn't need to be under watch. Like I told you before, the fourth seed will make sure the QB never returns. Itachi expression, expression didn't change. I, I see. Then if you live with him, you are not afraid that the QB wouldn't be back. Then I shouldn't be afraid either. Exactly, I am so glad that you understand it, Shizune said, delighted. Maybe there was hope at least after praying, paying for the baby food, Shizune and Itachi went their separate way. P uh, goodbye, Shizune-san, it was nice meeting you. Feelings mutual, Itachi-kun. I hope we meet again sometime soon. Shizune was in a considered better cons con considerably better mood that Itachi looked like a really nice and smart kid. Too bad he was too old to be Naruto's playmate. If only Naruto could meet some meet some kids like him, then maybe he maybe she wouldn't have to worry about him growing up without friends. Neither neither less that possibility for felt more uh, pleasurable pleasurable now. I don't know the meaning of that word. Maybe Juraya was in, uh, maybe Juraya Sama was right about trusting the next generation. Tsunade was already regretting spending the afternoon napping once uh, since once night arrived she was uh, able to she wasn't able to rest to rest to fall asleep. She constantly shifted in her bed trying to get into a comfortable position lift her pillow multiple times, open the window in order to allow more fresh breeze in, close the window once the room got too cold, open the window again until she punched the pillow in frustration. Maybe her best friend since she became an adult would be some help. 
She got up from bed, put on a robe, and went to the living room. Turns out, turned out your that turned out that Juraya was there also awake, as well as her and Juraya's best friend, a bottle of sake. What are you doing up so late? Juraya asked. I could ask you the same. Tsunade responded. True, but I did ask first. Tsunade growled. Okay, fine. I couldn't sleep and thought that some sake could help. So you may pour me a cup now. What about you? Sarutobi sensei tasked me with a big ass mission that's going to take years to complete and if I, I, I if I fail, Konoha's relationship with the Uchiha clan may go down the drain, Joraya said as he carefully poured some sake on Tsunade's cup. I thought that, uh, that you would sleep like a log given how overworked you have been this week. I slept, I slept all day, I spent all day sleeping, so yeah. Guess I missed my sleeping cycle. Tsunade said as she emptied the sake cup in one go. Joraya refilled it without a single word of a single word from the bond. Do you hear that? Joraya asked. Hear what? Tsunade said. Taken back, taken back. There was somebody trying to break into their house. I hear nothing exactly. Naruto was uh, hasn't cried a single time since sunset. I think that's a first. I didn't realize that I, I didn't realize that. And here we are, unable to sleep in our first silent night since we took care of that nasty noisy of the noisy brat. You have never been someone who appreciated irony. Oh, I do appreciate irony when it happens to somebody else. <laughs> you are quite the smart girl, aren't you? Joraya chuckled. By the way, him, can I ask you something? I am not drunk enough for that. Wow, shot down before I even asked. But I didn't mean that. Did you ever imagine your life turning out? Like this, Tsunade wondered about the question. The answer was a definite no. Since she was young, her picture of future of the future was being married to her boyfriend Dan Kato, who would be Hokage with her little brother Nawaki on his way to succeed him in the future. They would have at least two children. Tsunade would be retired from active duty and would work at the hospital either treating the sick and will be Ill, uh, Ill, uh, uh, either treating the sick and wounded or helping shape or helping shape the minds of the future generation of medics. Yet fate had different plans for her. Don and Nawaki lives were brutally, brutally cut short before her very eyes. Unable to deal with so much death Around her, she decided to flee Konoha and wandered aimlessly around the world. She stopped thinking about the future and focused on her present. But she, uh, but the few times she did think in the future, she could only picture herself either dying alone or an or an alley after drinking way too much. But being in, back in Konoha and raising a child. Alongside Joraya, no, that never entered her mind. Hearing about the fate of Naruto's parents awakened a spark of determination within Tsunade that the Sanin thought it was long extinguished. Maybe she failed to uh, fail to save Don and Nawa and Nawaki, but she saw that she will do her best to ensure Naruto's safety. Yet sometimes that at first appear some short or sort of self improved at uh, atonement tasks turn out to be rather pleasant. Yet something that at first appeared some sort of self improved atonement tasks 
turned out to be rather pleasant. Taking care of Naruto was a taxing job, but Tsunade considered it as much as much rewarding. And while living with Jiraiya didn't appeal to her one bit, the toad says was a much nicer housemate than she had expected. In all these months, she he had never broken once broken once the rules she had set. It almost felt like old times. No, Tsunade truly answered. Not that I complain. I didn't achieve much after leaving the village. I feel that I am doing something with my life again. Guess that monk, old monkey was right, eh? What about you? Like Tsunade, Joraya also had dreams. He dreamed of marrying Tsunade and maybe have a couple brats with her. They would live in a huge mansion. His reputation as a writer would even surpass his reputation as a ninja. People would fawn uh, over him, gush, uh, gush about his talents, and ask him to sign their books. He would, con uh, he would convince Orochimaru to drop his evil ways and return back to Konoha, like Tsunade Joraya didn't think in the future not even once since he was too afraid to think about it. His life was plagued by failures and every little accomplishment and very little accomplishment. So far his life was a circle of doing his research to write his books to earn money, then blew up that money on alcohol and women, then start to write uh, start work on his next book. Yet here he was, living under the same roof as Nade without even being in a relationship with her, and taking care of a kid that wasn't his nor Tsunade's. It was a good thing that Joraya didn't appreciate irony. But then again, now that sudden, now he suddenly didn't feel so afraid of thinking about the future. He thought that Tsunade and Joraya were part of the, uh, part of it. Brought some comfort to his torment, to, to his tortured mind. No, but even if I swimming. A swinging balcony unchained by responsibility, uh, responsibility such as fatherhood was something I suddenly enjoy, I greatly enjoyed being with you and taking care of Naruto's Mina or taking care of Minato's brat is a nice change of pace. By the way, how's that new book coming along? Slower than usual. Between being back on duty and you not letting me do more research not gonna happen at least as long as you want to continue living in this house and raising naruto i didn't say anything no but you were thinking it it was you who just asked about the book and i didn't know you had read uh, you know i didn't know you read minds now are you party yamanaka as well besides being he sent you and uzumaki i don't need to read i don't need mind reading powers to know what you are thinking you have always been an open book i see do i make for an interesting read then joraya said with white green on his face when you behave properly you certainly do joraya chuckled but didn't say anything in return, the board continued de de drinking until Tsunade brought about something worth, spe worth talking about. What do you think Orochimaru is doing right now? Joraya almost choked on his sake. Oh come on him, we are having a moment here and you ruin it by bringing up that tedious tr tr snake. I believe that you and I don't share the same definition of having a moment and given that we are reflecting on our lives and future I thought it would be a fitting to a fitting to talk about him he used to be our teammate don't remind me well for from what I knew the snakes probably cutting up course of some poor bastard in a vain effort to understand nature or 
understand the nature natural order of the universe or bullshit like that you know it's kind of sad that he's the only one of us whose life is turning out uh, turning out the way he planned it he doesn't seem to have any regrets over anything maybe if we decided to go rogue instead of legally detaining we would be uh, would have been happier trust me orochimaru is everything but happy he wants to become he wanted to become hokage yet he does the he yet he got denied and he embarked on a foolish quest for immortality that will end in disaster simply because the guy is too afraid to die the only thing that stopped me from enjoying his eventual demise is all the innocent life he is going to take with him you know you don't have to say that to make me feel better or to make you feel better about yourself i am not saying it because of that well maybe a little when you are down seeing other people down especially hated enemies can be can be a so bit of a con- uh, consolation but i know that not everything i said is true but i know that everything i said is true do you think we will see we will see him again i am afraid so i don't think he will ever let go of the grudge against konoha and sense he will come back for revenge maybe not now but sometime in the future i am certain of it well that's an laugh lifting thought once again it was you who asked yeah bringing up orochimaru might not have been a very good idea eh, it's okay alcohol can do that to you speaking of which more sake i think i will pass tsunade said with a wave of her hand juraya gave her a look don't stare as stare me like that i might like to drink but even i know when i had enough i think i'm going to go to bed yeah that's a good idea juraya said he was expecting tsunade's Miss uh, Mimi Sterling is words would loudly say how she didn't invite him to inv- Yeah that's a good idea Juraya said he was expecting Sunade uh, Sunade minister minister repeating his word and loudly say how she didn't invite him into her bed but could say it comment never came Well nice you know i think that maybe we should do this more often or at least at the very least whenever we can sleep i will have to buy more sake then good night sunade hime good night joraya maybe it was the alcohol or maybe it was the heart to heart but both sunade and joraya were thinking better about themselves and managed to fall asleep rather quickly and would have remained asleep until the next morning if it wasn't for certain somebody waking up all of a sudden when naruto cried i uh, would be heard across the whole neighborhood i hate that kid so much sunade gr- uh, grumbled as she lazily got out of her bed that's all for this video if you're gonna That's all for this video. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Bye-bye.